It's Saturday. What do most of us do on Saturdays? Well, some of you are listening to a TED Talk, but a lot of us go to the grocery store. So what I've done is I brought the grocery store to you by bringing my cart to you. I want to show you some of my favorite things, like my favorite cereal that I've really enjoyed since I've been one year old, and my favorite spaghetti sauce that was a part of one of my favorite meals growing up as a teenager. I also, of course, as a dietitian, have a cart loaded with fruits and vegetables, like broccoli and apples. But why do I make the choices that I actually make in my cart? Why do I buy the brands that I buy? It starts with the influence of our mothers. Our moms are our first teachers about food and cooking and even about the philosophy they have on health. In fact, the University of Minnesota actually studied this and asked, what or who has the biggest impact on a family's eating habits? And overwhelmingly, it was the mom. And yet, this actually even started before I was born, because my great-grandmother taught my grandmother about food and cooking, and my grandmother taught my mom, my mom taught me, and now I'm teaching my own children. It's a legacy that's been created about health. Moms have the power to set the tone of health in the home or not, by being intentional or not, and moms really can change the world. So what are two ways that a mom can simply make a change in her family's eating habits? Number one, by starting a kitchen counter cooking school. A kitchen counter cooking school. When I think of a cooking school, I think of a place that's fun, I think of a place where I'm with people that I enjoy to be around, and I also think about I am learning something new. That's the idea of a kitchen counter cooking school. It happens right in your own home, right in your own kitchen. Why should we start in the kitchen? Because health actually starts in the kitchen. When I open up my cupboard to choose a food, I'm making a food choice. And every time, over time, I'm making those choices, they're turning into habits, and those habits are turning into a lifestyle. So health really starts in the kitchen. 51% will say that they learned how to cook from their mothers. 66% will say, I still cook the same way as my mom. And 35% will get on the phone and ask mom, what was that recipe that you had for Christmas that you could bring again? Or how do you make grandma's favorite apple pie? What about the other 49%? Where are they learning how to cook? Something that's really popular in our culture is watching cooking shows. And me, as a mom, sitting on the couch watching a cooking show, I see this beautiful, expansive kitchen on TV, white marble countertops, a pot rack with shiny silver pans, and a whole other room that houses all the food. That's a pantry. But when I compare that to my own kitchen, I see a laminate countertop, and I see a lazy Susan instead of a pot rack. But having a beautiful kitchen like that on TV, does that make me a better cook? If I'm a baseball player and I'm watching a baseball game, does it make me a better baseball player? Or does the actual act of actually swinging the bat or actually chopping up vegetables and sauteing them actually make me a better cook? More than any television program could. Julia Child said it best when she said, learn how to cook, try new recipes, learn from your mistakes, be fearless, and above all, have fun. That's the idea of a kitchen counter cooking school. A kitchen counter cooking school is not meant to be intimidating. Yet, a third of Americans are more comfortable working on their computers than they are in their own kitchens. I've been cooking with my kids since they've been very young. And here are some things that I've learned. When we create a meal together in the kitchen, we are almost guaranteeing that that meal is going to be healthier because we're using fresh fruits and vegetables, we're using lean protein, and we can control the ingredients that are going into the meal. Having a kitchen counter cooking school also can create a sense of adventure. Last year, I decided to take my kids on a virtual vacation and create the United States of My Plates Challenge. And so all we did is we picked a recipe from each state and cooked it. And so we were essentially traveling there. And then my kids came up with a grading system of one to five. Five being, this is the best recipe. Let's definitely make this again. And a one being, I'd only eat this for survival. 
<laughs> and there were a few ones. But while we were cooking, we were having a sense of adventure. And my kids were anticipating what was actually happening and what the next week was going to bring. And while my son was chopping up red peppers for a recipe, he was not only touching them and looking at them and actually smelling it as he's chopping it and hearing it, but as he chopped a red pepper, he actually ate half of it. Because as we're chopping and getting involved with our senses, we're exploring our food and it makes it more enticing. And the best thing I love about cooking with my kids is that it allows me to be bonding with them and connecting with them, and I know that they will remember that for years to come. So what does a kitchen counter cooking school look like? It looks like your own kitchen. It looks like your own countertop, what you already have in your drawers as far as tools. It looks like opening up that cabinet that houses 50 cookbooks that you rarely use and actually pulling one out and starting to use it. Julia Child said, you don't have to cook anything fancy or complicated. All you need to do is cook good food from fresh ingredients. And where do those fresh ingredients come from? From idea number two, our own modern day backyard victory garden. Some of you might be familiar with a victory garden. These were popular during World War II in the early 1940s. And they started because a lot of troops, a lot of men, were fighting the war. And so there was less labor in the United States to actually transport food. And so things were rationed, like meat and eggs and cheese and even canned fruits and vegetables. So the United States government thought, wouldn't it be great if we encouraged our citizens to plant victory gardens? They would be supporting the war and the troops by doing this. They could provide their own fruits and vegetables enough for their family, but also for their neighbors. It was patriotic to plant a garden. What a concept. During, this, during these few short years, 20 million victory gardens were planted. That was above and beyond what was happening already in rural America. This was in cities, in backyards, and community plots. And from those 20 million gardens, 10 million tons of fruits and vegetables were harvested. This was so much so that when the war ended and the spring of 1946 came along, there actually wasn't this promotion to plant gardens. There was actually a food shortage because those same people who planted gardens went to the grocery store for that same produce that was once in their backyards and tried to buy all these fruits and vegetables, but agriculture had not yet got up to that. I grew up on a crop, corn and soybeans, and also hog farm. And a lot of my summer was spent in the garden. This is me at seven years old. And when I sat down to a family meal each evening, I looked at my plate and I knew that the broccoli on my plate, I had picked that that morning from the garden. And the applesauce on my plate, I had harvested those apples from our backyard apple trees. And that pork chop, I helped take care of that pig as part of my daily chores. I knew where everything on my plate came from. If we thought about our last night's meal, do we know where everything on our plates come from? Something I've been really excited about doing since my kids have been born is gardening with them. And this is my daughter. On the left, she's two years old. She's always wanted to be in the garden, planting in the garden, digging in the soil. And last summer, on the picture on the right, she's eight years old, and she was so excited about harvesting her very first watermelon. She planted that watermelon, and she called it Wally, <laughs> and was so excited also to just go out and see what's happening with Wally, how big are Wally's watermelons getting, and finally we were able to actually harvest one, and she couldn't wait to take it in the house to open it up. My kids have always been excited about finding out what's going on in the garden and harvesting from the garden, but they're also excited about planning the garden and what it will look like and then planting it. So much so that my son, who loves Legos, decided last year to create his, own very, his very own garden design kit out of Legos, and he built our garden, including all the vegetables and where they would be. Only 14% in 2008 actually had vegetable and fruit gardens, 14% in the United States. But how could a victory garden actually make a difference? If you have a victory garden in your backyard, 
you are not only having access to all these fruits and vegetables, but you can harvest quite a bit. In fact, one square foot of gardening space can give you a half a pound of fresh fruits and vegetables. So for me, I have a 300 square foot garden. I can, hit, I can get 150 pounds of fruits and vegetables each summer. Not only that, gardening provides a lot of activity, physical activity. And if you're doing intensive gardening where maybe you're doing a lot of weeding or turning over the soil, you can burn up to 300 calories in 30 minutes. If more families had victory gardens, I believe that we could even grow enough to get to that recommended daily goal of having five cups of fruits and vegetables every single day. And not only that, I believe having your kids involved will actually entice them to actually want to eat those fruits and vegetables. I believe we could become victorious, and here's why. In 2011, I started a kid's garden at my supermarket with basically the sole intent to teach kids where food comes from, as I had learned as a child. And nothing solidified my efforts more than when a local news reporter in his mid-20s came out to get some coverage of our harvest party celebrating the end of the season. And he was getting some footage of the tomatoes and the watermelons and the cucumbers, but he really wanted some footage of carrots. And he asked me, where are the carrots? And I said, oh, they're just right over there. And he looked at me and he said, I don't see the carrots. <laughs> and so I walked with him and I physically pulled a carrot out of the ground. He had no idea that a carrot grows underground and he was in his mid-twenties. So I've been gardening with these kids, but I don't see their parents. But I wanted to know, is there an impact of me being with the kids in the garden, translating it to home? And 52% of parents said that they are noticing a more positive attitude about fruits and vegetables. So much so that one daughter came home and told her mom, Mom, could you go to the store and buy me some Swiss chard? What kid asked for Swiss chard? <laughs> no one. But she did. She went to the store and she actually didn't know what Swiss chard was either. And so she grabbed her iPhone and she looked it up. 61% of parents said, that my kids are actually more excited and interested in getting into the kitchen with me. 48% said, I am now offering more fruits and vegetables because my kids are demanding it. And 35% said, I am now planting a garden. But yet the best comment I've received so far is from this last summer when a, when a girl came home and told her mom, mom, I know how to fight cancer. Eat the rainbow. And she was six years old. She knew that by eating lots of colorful fruits and vegetables, that could have a positive impact on her health. We can do the same thing in our own backyard by planting a garden with our kids. But it really just takes a mom stepping up and saying, I want to make an impact on my family's eating habits. All I ever wanted to be as a child was a mom. When I look back at my elementary school scrapbooks, on the bottom line, when it says, when I grow up, I would always write a mother over and over and over. And along the way, I became interested in food and became a registered dietitian. And for some reason, thought it was my sole position that I needed to change the world. And yet, the world I really needed to change was right in my own home, with my own kids, in my own kitchen, and in my own backyard. As a mom, there's nothing more that I want than a healthy family. And creating my own kitchen counter cooking school and my own modern day backyard victory garden, I know I'm changing the lives of my kids and the health of my family. If we did this together, planted a garden, started a cooking school, we could change the health of our community and the direction of health in our world. Wouldn't that be a patriotic victory. Moms really can change the world, right in their own kitchens, right in their own backyards, but it starts right at home. Thank you.